Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest Riker. It was made official today, but we heard news of it a few days ago, that the Toronto Raptors have signed undrafted free agent Terrence Davis to, a, I believe it was a two-year contract, but definitely a guaranteed contract with the team. Riker, looking at his game, looking at everything we've seen in him, and we're going to break it all down, but could he be the next undrafted star, undrafted gem for the Toronto Raptors and take, you know, almost be the next Fred Van Vliet for this roster? He could absolutely almost be the next Fred Van Vliet. If we look at where what he's accomplished thus far and the path mm-hmm. that he's taken to get to this point right now, there's a lot of similarities that will break down between himself and Fred Van Vliet. But Ben, before we get into it, I want to say we probably definitely put the new intro, the new animation mm-hmm. that you worked on at the beginning of this pod. So that is exciting. Hopefully everybody likes it and takes to it. It was time that we updated the logo because it's updated on every other platform. But then I got all the <laughs> yeah. stats in front of me and I really like what I'm seeing. I know some people are not always super receptive to stats, but before we get into that, what do you see of him? What's He got 22 points before he got picked up in the summer league mm-hmm. by the Raptors for the Nuggets. I, I think it was. Yep. That's correct. It was, yeah, perfect. And then Masai Jerry saw something. So what, what, what is that train of thought right there? Certainly. As you mentioned, uh, he's an undrafted free agent. He's picked up by the Denver Nuggets Summer League team, and he played his first game. And the Masai Ujiri, I believe he had 22 points, as you mentioned, in his first game with the Nuggets. And Masai Ujiri said, enough's enough. You're coming being a Toronto Raptor. Masai had his scouting eyes on, his scouting goggles, and he said, this is the guy that we need to bring in. Uh, Interviews that came out, and he said that he had Terrence Davis projected in his top 30, I believe, top 35. So he was a guy Masai looked at as a potential first rounder, and he went completely undrafted. So this is a player that if Masai Ujiri has good faith in, I, I immediately have good faith in everything that we've seen from him. Just how his path, his trajectory that you have in front of you. It's it's very encouraging to where where he's at and how he could potentially fit with the Toronto Raptors. Maybe not necessarily this season, but in the future. Absolutely, Ben. And maybe, okay, well, actually, yeah, definitely not this season, especially if Lowry and Van Bleed yeah. are still on the roster. But he could fill in that third point guard position, especially mm-hmm. if injuries yep. sneak up, which they almost always do. And if we're talking about people that went undrafted and slipped off the boards. We can also look at Taco Falls. Same thing happened, and he's maybe the biggest breakout name of the Summer League thus far for the Boston Celtics. So there is a lot of guys that have potential that maybe, I don't know, I guess the scouts didn't see them or people didn't want to take the risk. But this is a guy that's good that he fell into the laps of the Toronto Raptors because the thing that impresses me the most, if we look at his university stats, so he played on Ole Miss, he shot mm-hmm. 45, about 45%. Uh, from the floor in his career about 34 percent from three uh, getting about how many was it almost six rebounds three and a half assists so we can do the comparables with Van Vliet in a minute after you chime back in but what I like about this is he's a fourth year guy and consistently Mm -hmm. averaging these points in everybody knows the game is slowed down so he's averaging 30 minutes per game getting about what was it again? 15 points per game? About 15 Something points. Around. In his in his senior year, he had a 15 points per game. 15 points per game in about 30 minutes play and on 32-second shot clocks in majority mm-hmm. zone defense. The, the defense is complete. Like, you don't really have the opportunity to do nearly as much ISO uh, in college basketball as you do NBA. So you actually yeah. transition better if you're scoring that amount. You can almost expect to increase as long as, you know, you fit well within the system because it's difficult to get points as an individual in college unless you're, you know, a big time player. So I think that those stats are pretty promising, especially for a guy who should be level headed going through his entire four years at university. Certainly. And Everything that we see, his stats were pretty solid all throughout his college career, aside from his first year where he didn't get many minutes, but 15 points per game, 14 points per game, 15 points per game, but his percentages and his efficiency all improved every single season he was at Ole Miss. His three-point percentages went up from 33% to 37, so there's some improvement there. His free throw percentage went from 72 to 77, and and we're going from a second season because his first season he barely played, so it's not a big enough sample size, but... He improved. He improved in all areas. He's a guard that is shown to be scrappy. He's very athletic from everything we've seen. But a 6'4 player getting about six rebounds per game, that's extremely impressive, especially at the college level, as you mentioned, as there's not as many possessions, there's longer shot clocks. So that's all very encouraging. But the thing I really like is that he's going to come into this league as a four-year player 
already polished. He's ready to come in and if there's injuries this season, he can step in and maybe be a backup point guard. He'll probably be the third string player right now. He's shown that he can play off the ball, he can score a lot, but this isn't the year that I expect a lot from Terrence Davis. And the you know, we said in the title he could be the next Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet didn't have much of an impact his rookie year. He was just coming to the game, he impressed when he came in, but didn't really have any standout performances. He had that one game against the Chicago Bulls that got everyone excited, but didn't really have any big nights where he really took over. It was the second season where Fred Van Vliet got his opportunity and really ran with everything that he got on this team. So I don't expect much from Terrence Davis this year, but the fact that Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet are free agents after next season, and the Toronto Raptors are going to get a full year to look at this guy, see if he can be a backup point guard in this league, you know, after a year of polishing his game, adjusting from the college level to the NBA level, and maybe if we continue to go on the trajectory we're going, going young, Fred Van Vliet's a starter. This guy, I think, could be the, the next bench mob captain be the next guy that can lead the second unit, the next crop of young guys. Because if we if we remember, Fred took guys like DeLon, Norm, Siakam, and Pirtle, all these players together, and made the bench mob and made them what they are today, and at least carried that group together. It didn't necessarily make them what they are today. I feel like Terrence Davis could be a catalyst for that next wave of bench players to the Toronto Raptors. It's definitely possible. We have undoubtedly one of the best or better developmental staffs in the entire mm -hmm. NBA in terms of both scouting players and bringing them up we can not talk enough about how the development of pascal siakam and fred van vliet would it have been realized on another team who knows but it certainly was not expected by the rest of the league that they would be as good as they have become and mm -hmm. like i said there's a lot of comparisons if you look at fred van vliet's stats in university he was almost on par in terms of field goal percentage three point percentage points per game uh, rebounds per game in one season so there's a lot of similarities and he might even have the edge Terrence Davis uh, in terms of his athleticism being about six four and a half 192 pounds not that heavy I'm, I'm almost the same weight and I'm only 511 <laughs> but he can put on muscle that's for certain and he's a bit of a hard-nosed defender I, I hear mm -hmm. that he had to learn how to defend without fouling nearly as much but since he's figured that out he's become in the top uh, among his category for stops per possession that he's guarding in one on one mm -hmm. and one on one uh, play. So, it, so I like I said, I think it's promising. But I absolutely agree with your assessment. And although I don't like people with the first name Terrence, we've had a bad track record, <laughs> aka Terrence Ross. I definitely think then that eventually Lowry is going to part ways with the Toronto Raptors. It's going to happen in one facet or another, right? He's not going to be good forever, or serviceable forever. Fred Van Vliet, I expect him to become a, a starting point guard at some point, right? So yeah. if this guy becomes a backup, I think that that's a good scenario. And I agree, it doesn't need to happen this season, but we could train him up. Yeah, no, that's fair. As for Kyle Lowry, we can make a whole video on him, but whether he stays or he leaves... Probably after next season, his role will be reduced with the Toronto Raptors if he decides to stay. He's an all-star player, but he's about 33 years old now. He has a lot of mileage on those legs, so we're going to be looking for point guards to really fill that role and give us some depth at that position, whether injuries happen or people get a reduced role. I have, you know, Kyle Lowry or these players. So he definitely, I think, will have an opportunity with this team. And you brought up, this is like a comparison to Fred Van Vliet. I think Masai Ujiri saw what he saw on Fred, and he's seeing a lot in this player because he obviously went undrafted. So there are some low points to his game, so to speak. Some things that made people look over this guy from drafting him to where he was probably expected to go. But he, he's very athletic. He's looked as a force defensively sometimes. But as you mentioned, he gets kind of foul happy. His positioning isn't always correct. But with the Toronto Raptors defensive mindset, all the defenders that he's going to be surrounded by through training camp throughout the regular season, it seems like the Toronto Raptors even make average defenders look like very strong players. And we've seen Fred Van Vliet's defense improve significantly since he was on the Raptors. He was a lockdown player on Steph Curry during the NBA Finals, running that box one and just face guarding him for a lot of the possessions. So I think Terrence Davis will his defense of positioning and all that will be helpful and the fact that he's already athletic and has that you know physical tools to be a good defender he's already a step ahead yeah uh, and with offending then real yeah. quick with offending it's you know everybody in the nba is an athlete for the most part unless you're a phenomenal yeah. shooter but 
basically a prerequisite of making the NBA Mm -hmm. is to be a good athlete. But that doesn't always translate to defense. You can just become a good defensive player by actually putting in effort to become a good defensive player. And what's nice about the undrafted guys is they always have something to prove. So I think that he could even step in and take it extra serious in the same vein that McCaw, you can see that he's really trying Mm -hmm. every time he's out there. Yeah, for sure. And he's even, you know, all NBA players are obviously athletic and could run and all that sort of stuff. Maybe Big Baby Davis would be an example, but he's gigantic, so he has his own physical tools. But he, he this guy's explosive. He has the, the athleticism relative to an NBA player where he can be a, a lockdown guy, and he's tall for a point guard at 6'4", so that's the thing. And his point he's a point guard. He's He can't really play the two, but he's not a great creator. And we saw that was a knock on Fred Van Vliet coming into the league. He was a guy that played for the Shockers and could hit the big shots, and that certainly translated. We saw that in the NBA Finals this year, uh, Fred Van Vliet. But he wasn't really a guy that could really set people up. He was good at running an offense, but wasn't, you know, Steve Nash with his passing and setting people up. And he improved in that area. We, you know, a lot of people bagged on Fred Van Vliet midway through the season, especially in the Orlando's, Orlando and Philadelphia series when he get, gets a bit dribble happy and isn't... You know, he's looking for a shot more than setting people up, and that's a similar weakness to Terrence Davis, but Fred is learning through that. He's working through that, and the guidance of Kyle Lowry, Fred, Nick Nurse, the development staff here, I think those weaknesses can be kind of filled and plugged in. They're not weaknesses that would raise any red flags and shock anyone looking at him to say, this guy can't play. I think those, all of his weaknesses can be fixed. His shooting will improve. Everything will work out, and, you know, I have high hopes for this guy coming in. Ben, me too. And like I said, Masai, he's playing chess. He's making moves. It's good to see. Certainly. But let us know what you guys think. If you've seen the highlights, I know he hasn't played a summer league game with the Toronto Raptors yet. Maybe by the time this video is out. I think he's either playing tonight or tomorrow, Riker. So let us know what you think of this guy. Watch his highlights. Let let us know in the comment section below. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. You're the best for making this far. Riker, do you have any last words? I do. This weekend, I'll be in New York. You know what my main priority will be, Ben? What? Spotting R.J. Barrett. Round two. Hey. (laughs) Not really, but it would be cool to see. (laughs) Anyways. That's true. That's it. Is is he in Vegas, though? Oh, true. Yeah, I guess for summer league. Uh, Next Gotta make a commute. Little commute, brother. (laughs) (laughs) A little New York to Vegas drive. Nothing nothing to it. (laughs) All right, everyone. Cheers.